Hey, how's it going everybody? I am Dan Thompson with Claris Networks and this is another edition of What's Up in Tech. Today we're discussing the Internet of Things and I have with me a special guest today. His name is Slay Griffin. He works with, actually owns, Sophos Security. Uh, so welcome today. Uh, real quickly, tell us what do you do, Slay? Uh, like I said, I, I own Cypher Security and we do uh, vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, incident response, forensic analysis, um, human resources work for different kinds of people that need uh, information security expertise. So Slade has a very, very security-minded brain, uh, obviously why we brought him in for this discussion, so it should be uh, hopefully very entertaining for you guys. So uh, let's dive right in. Internet of Things. So Internet of Things, just to catch you up real quick if you're not familiar, is just kind of a new buzz uh, phrase uh, for just an internet full of things that may not be laptops or desktops. What I mean by that is uh, this past year at the CES, uh, we saw a refrigerator that could connect to the internet. We saw a dishwasher that could connect to the internet, uh, obviously Xboxes and Wii. All, things like that are cell phones. Uh, everybody has them. They're very prolific in the uh, in the world today. Um, that's where we're headed. So the question is, uh, when does it become more valuable of a target for hackers to try to hack into your refrigerator than it does your PC? Will that ever happen? Should this be things we should be concerned about? Slade, dive right in. What are your thoughts on all this? Yeah. So uh, several thoughts on that. Um, we, we saw the article last week or the week before about a, a refrigerator being used in a, right. in a, in a spamming attack. And, and I don't know whether or not that's true. There's other articles that say, no, it wasn't. Uh, the, the point is that if it could be used in an attack like that if it's connected to the Internet. Uh, those devices are running the Android operating system. That seems to be the uh, operating system of choice for a lot of manufacturers right now. And uh, essentially what we've done is we've taken a computer, uh, you know, they're not a computer, but we've taken a computer and we've stuck it in a refrigerator mm -hmm. or in a, in a phone. We, we've made the phone into a computer now and, and now these things have the ability to uh, be leveraged in an attack should they present themselves as vulnerable. So I think one of the main things you have to, to look at with that is, you know, what are you bringing into your environment, in, in a business especially, and, and where are you plugging them in? Yeah, that's a great point. So um, typically today, the way Android handles security updates is through updates to the software. Uh, the question then becomes is if you have a refrigerator or a dishwasher or whatever, um, maybe it has the full-blown version of Android, maybe it doesn't, but at the end of the day, how does it get updated? Uh, if you have a two-year-old Android device, well, those are obviously vulnerable. New ones may or may not be. Uh, it's the same kind of scenario as, hey, you're still running Windows XP in your environment. It's the same conversation, but now we're talking about a refrigerator or some device that may not have a means to be updated. So these are obviously things to worry about. Um, thoughts on protecting ourselves. Uh, should we worry about it at home? Definitely worry about it at business? What do you think? Uh, for the, for the home user, I mean, I, I would say that the, the primary worry there is if you're going to input your Twitter credentials into your uh, refrigerator so that you can watch your, your Twitter stream, then, then perhaps you've opened yourself up to some risk of, of having your, your Twitter handle compromised if you care about that. Uh, and, and in the workplace, certainly I think that anything that you bring in needs to have the same level of concern that any other computing object would. Uh, for example, you all wouldn't allow me to connect my laptop to your infrastructure here, mm -hmm. uh, which is wise. Uh, but but maybe I, I could bring in, I could sell you a refrigerator and you might plug that in. And so maybe architecting your network in such a way that at a minimum, uh, things that aren't critical to your business mission, how, how you earn money, are on a separate VLAN, on a virtual mm -hmm. network. Uh, and what I would prefer to see personally would be them plugged in outside the firewall, that, that that network should not reside anywhere near where your data is or your customer's data at all. Yeah, perfect. And so that actually coincides very nicely with the new security standards that Claris is now implementing with our wireless devices. So uh, basically the stance that we want to take going forward is if you have devices that connect to your network that are either company owned or not company owned, but for whatever reason we can't manage those operating systems well. So as an example, our phones or iPads, uh, we want to segment those off from your corporate network. So if something ever does happen to them, well, they can do minimal damage, if any damage, to your corporate network, which is exactly what we want. So um, these are things to think about, obviously, inside our companies and things that we should uh, be considering. Like Slade was saying, we want to push those as far out as possible so they can do the least amount of damage as possible. Uh, I mean, especially something as arbitrary as a refrigerator, right? I mean, we wouldn't want that thing running amok. Uh, on our network. So uh, things to think about. Obviously, if you need help with any of that, we can assist you with that. Uh, if you need help uh, looking through your network or if you need help just thinking about security, Slay can obviously give you a hand there. So uh, we will catch you next time on What's Up in Tech. Again, I'm Dan Thompson with Clarice Networks, Slay Griffin with Sophos Security. See you next time.